gamers dreamcast guy here i got my yo good morning what happened to the what's up hot coffee ready and it's time to dig ew coffee into some scalding gaming news because today we have i fucking hate coffee bro i don't know why anyone likes coffee i feel like it's more of just like a fucking trend thing than an actual thing people like two very big topics to try and dissect the god of war ragnarok release date seems to have leaked and additionally they dropped some very very impressive gameplay for horizon forbidden west that i kind of want to watch with you guys because it really seems like sony is juicing up to have a really incredible 2022. I also want to talk about a hate comment I got that I feel like raises some valid criticisms of the nature of PlayStation, but we're going to talk about that at the end of the video. Let's begin first and foremost with God of War Ragnarok. Now, this is a project that everybody seems to be incredibly interested in because the God of War 2018 was already such a mega hit. Not only did the game sell like hotcakes, it got huge critical reception. Everybody loved, loved, loved it this game even if previously they hated god of war like me not really a god of war fan until this game came out well what the fuck how can you not be a god of war fan when god of war 3 fucking existed oh my god bro if you actually think god of war 2019 or 2018 is better than fucking god of war 3 you know what please do me a gigantic favor and take a long walk off a short dock. That's a fucking L take right there. Ragnarok is something everybody has been waiting ever since it was first revealed in 2020. Well, it looks like, according to this scraping, essentially it looks like it's coming out September 30th. Now, the way that this works, and I want to talk about some of the people who sort of doubt this, there is this Twitter account called Yo, PlayStation up. Game Size. Now, what this guy does is basically... I'm getting my dog. I'm going to hold him. He's looking too damn cute right now. Come here, bud. Yeah, I see this one. Hold up, guys. I gotta take my headset off. Good boy. All right. The dog is acquired. The dog has been acquired. You going to spoil that dog? No, I'm not. The dog is a dub. The dog is an epic W. Y'all hear him sniffing the mic? Make some noise or something. Come on. You're typically always snorting or something. Good boy. Yeah, that's a good boy. Here, put your head up on the desk. All right, you can sit like that. All right. The dog is acquired. Let's continue on. Yo, what the fuck are you doing? He goes into the code of the PlayStation Store and he looks at all the back-end data. It tells whenever there's demos being uploaded, whenever new games are being posted, and it can tell you just exactly how much you're going to have to install that next big release. It's an interesting idea. Well, currently, inside the PlayStation database, it says that Ragnarok is coming out September 30th, 2022. Now, even he himself says it could just be a placeholder because occasionally games are listed... But that is a placeholder date. September 30th, 2022 is the end of the third quarter, as in the end of the ninth month of the year. That's 100% a fucking placeholder date. But it's not the real number. It's more of just like a hypothetical target release date. I personally believe that this is going to be September 30th. I believe that this is the 100% real release date. It's literally one of the most common placeholder dates in any fucking industry. Mostly because it's a very good space for it. Right now, 
Like, PlayStation has really set up a packed year, pretty much every 60 days for all of next year. We're going to be seeing things like Gran Turismo 7, freaking uh, Horizon Forbidden West, which we're going to look at here in a second. There's also things like Ghostwire Tokyo, Final Fantasy 16, which is coming out. Dude, it's kind of sad because he's almost too big to sit on my lap right now in my desk. Like, it's really fucking sad. Boy, you used to fit in one arm. Now you can barely fit in my lap. He's going to be too big soon. Shit's going to be sad. It's later in the year. Like, pretty much back to back, Sony is trying to create a big environment where you're excited to have a PlayStation 5. So, having this come in in September, I feel like this is a very, very smart spot for it. Additionally, I decided to look it up. September 30th is a Friday. Now, here in America, almost all the video games come out on a Tuesday or a Friday. So, this being a Friday release date, again, it seems pretty dang pleasable or feasible. So, I think that this is legit. Now, additionally, the other part of this is the fact that I feel like having a September 30th release date really primes it so that if for some reason... Yeah, I probably am going to get him a chair, but I'm going to wait till he gets a little bit older so it doesn't chew it up. And Sony wants to try and just double or boost the heck out of the sales of PlayStation consoles coming up on the next holiday, which would be, you know, like Black Friday and Christmas of 2022. They can start to do some Kratos bundles, try and package together God of War Ragnarok, because at that point, it'll be 45 days after release. They can start to just slip it in with other games, or that'd be 60 days after release. It's a good chance for them to sell even more of the game, but also try and package together more hype for their systems. Now, I want to take a look at something that came out a couple days ago that is... Ex yep, he really is wearing a Spider-Man shirt. Extremely impressive to me, which is this clip from Horizon Forbidden West. Now, it's only 26 seconds here, and you can see here I tweeted that it said, uh, the more I see of Horizon Forbidden West, the more I believe it is going to be a big Game of the Year contender. Now, let me just boost this up here so you can actually see it for yourself. I am so incredibly impressed. Every single time I see this... The fact that she's able to grapple hook, hop off stuff, do this little glider ability. Like, additionally, look at the fact that this huge robot snake from hell has these glowing little diodes all over it. Like, the technological leap, both graphically and physics-wise, it seems like this is a completely different beast. Like, it's not. It's literally a PS4 game. I am still just so blown away by the fact that, well, Sony is managing to make such a giant advancement in their own gameplay in a single generation. Like, Horizon... <laughs> Bruh. Zero Dawn on the PlayStation 4 was already a very, very fun game. It's one of my very favorite PlayStation 4 games of all time. But the fact that Forbidden West seems like a huge advancement, a mega leap over its predecessors. I feel like, seriously, the more we see this game, the more I think that this is going to be that game that's the summer hit. This does come out in February, so it's kind of crazy to think that this is just a couple weeks away, like in the- Oh shit, guys, should I pick up Horizon and play that shit on stream? What do you guys think? Y'all down to see me get bored as fuck playing Horizon and just, like, literally not want to fucking finish it? <laughs> Bruh, Oski Waska the two. Yo, Griffin, can you hold me as well? Yeah, I got you, man. There's still some room. And hold on, let me lean forward. Gaming. <laughs> Trying not to wake him up. Username with the five. My five-year-old nephew wears Spider-Man outfits. Seeing a grown man wear one is concerning. Yeah, I agree, man. I agree. Let's do a poll for that. Should I stream Horizon Forbidden West? Sorry, bud, but you're in the way. All right grand scheme of things but more than that i have a feeling that this is going to be the new benchmark release this is going to be that game that people point to as an example of playstation 5 done right but then why the fuck is it on the ps4 bro it's not a fucking ps5 game it's literally a playstation 4 game that they're porting to the playstation 5 they're just upping the fucking graphics that's why it's lewis with the two it's not your style of game personally i'm hype yeah fair enough 
I tried to like Horizon. I tried to play it on PS4, couldn't get into it. I rebuilt it on Steam when it came out there, tried to like it, just could not get into it. So I've given it two attempts. I've tried to like it, but hopefully this game isn't as fucking slow. King of Wii is the two watch. Stepanka, she still farts in a jar. Ew, fuck no, I'm good. I'm not into that fetish shit. SYS Lewis with the two. Also, hey, what's up, Bucko? I'm off tonight. How are you? Pretty good, man. Pretty good. I have work tomorrow, but then I'm off Friday, so that's pretty exciting, I guess. But hope you're doing well, man. Speaking of Sony... I do want to talk about a mean comment I got a couple days ago because uh -oh. I think it's an interesting one. Uh -oh. I'm not going to show it because I don't want the person to get dogpiled or anything, but they basically said, I feel like Sony is pushing back their own games to try and help PlayStation 5 sells. Now, it seems like what he was trying to yeah, I agree. convey is the fact that it does seem as if possibly these games are very, very complete. When you see clips of Horizon Forbidden West or when you see people... How is that a mean comment, bro? just showing off different tech demos for Gran Turismo 7 it does seem like these games are complete it does seem like maybe they're trying to iron out some finalized glitches but for the most part it seems like Sony's major games for 2022 seem pretty much complete they seem like they're ready to go but this guy proposed th dude my dog is so fucking warm he's like a little space heater man He's going to put me to sleep. What the fuck? Maybe I shouldn't have picked him up. He's like, I don't know if you guys have ever had this experience, but when like a puppy is sleeping on your lap, it's like literally one of the most soothing experiences ever. Like you have this soft, sweet little sleeping dog on your lap and you just pet it and it makes you feel like so calm and like you literally feel like you could just fall asleep in any second. That's kind of what I'm getting right now. So I may have to put him down the theory that they're delaying them to try and sell additional PlayStation 5s. Right now, the PS5 is still one of the rarest systems on the planet. Not for lack of trying. Sony seems to be making... The PS5 is not fucking rare. Dude, it's sold over 10 million fucking units. That's not rare. Every single one they can. From the I can go on StockX and buy one right now. I can go on eBay and buy one right now. They're not fucking rare. You can get them easily. Boards to the processors to the chips, like they're trying to make these things as quickly as possible. But as soon as a PlayStation 5 is built, it's bought, either by a bot or by a person. But I think that right now, Sony is in a position where they want their games to sell as much as possible. Obviously, right? I mean, straight up, if you actually look at the budgets of these games, a lot of times Sony is spending hundreds of millions of dollars. Like, let that sink in. Hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars to make sure that each of these games is the biggest, most badass masterpiece it can possibly be. Which is great for the gamers, because we get a chance to experience these games in all their glory. But Sorry, man. Great it does for the mean gamers. that they want that money back. They want to make sure these games sell as much as possible. They want to make sure that people are lining up and pre-ordering it and getting the extended deluxe editions and stuff like that. If there's not enough PlayStation 5s, Yo, hold on, hold on. it could hurt these projects. He was crying out in his sleep. I think he's done. Shit. He was like going. Oh. Oh. Damn, I was going to uh, boost my audio so y'all could hear it, but never mind. Checks. It seems like maybe there is to some degree some truth to this. That maybe Sony wants to try and space out their releases. That way people have. Yeah, bro. I've gotten 11 PS5s at retail. They're not fucking rare at all. You just have to know where to look. a chance to get a PlayStation 5. My thought, though, is that Horizon Forbidden West is still going to be on PlayStation 4 as well. Same with God of War Ragnarok. These games are going to objectively be better on the PlayStation 5, but... Really? This cross-gen ability, I do feel like they're still going to be profitable. They're still going to make their money back. I. Yo, hold up.
Did y'all hear that? Did y'all hear that or not? I tried to capture it. Did you hear like the little... That was him. I don't know if it picked it up or not. I tried to get it. You hear him? Okay, cool. I'm glad it picked it up. But yeah, that's what he that's what he was doing. He's like going <laughs> Bruh. He just be snoozing right now. I think that really Sony is in a weird predicament where these games are going to be huge hits. It seems like everything we've seen, these games are going to get critically loved. They're going to get pre-orders. They're going to get the numbers. It just comes down to the fact that how many of these people are going to convert over to PlayStation 5 users? That's the real question that I kind of hope we learn next year. But tell me your thoughts in the comments down below. Do you believe this God of War Ragnarok release date? Or do you think this is just a bunch of fooey? Tell me your thoughts in the comments down below. And additionally, I think it's a bunch of fooey. What's up, man? Here, that cannot be comfy. Come here. Lean back. You know you're good at it. You'll fall asleep. Good boy. So Crusher Bad with the fun Nintendo is known to have games completed and holds them until they release it. Sony is no different. It's called spacing out to keep momentum. That and the fact that the PlayStation 5 right now is selling out every single time it goes live. So they don't need to release like these bigger games that are used to kind of like entice people to go out and buy the console. So they keep a lot of that shit on the back burner in case the fucking hype dies around the console itself to keep that momentum going. So yeah, 100%. Rikenzi with the two, Sony in my emails, one a PS5, how about now? Now? I don't know, man. Like, I think Sony, Microsoft, everybody's loving this shit that everything sells out immediately. Because it builds fucking hype and makes their products seem exclusive and kind of cool or like rare and you know that makes them more desirable so even when they're readily available people will see them on a shelf and instantly buy it because they'll associate like oh my god it's so hard to get one of these if you already own a playstation 5 tell me your thoughts in the comments down below about all of this idea of possibly pushing back their own release dates so they can sell more games for the playstation 5 thanks so much for watching gamers if you enjoyed this video please give it a giant thumbs up share with your friends, and subscribe if you haven't already. But do me the biggest favor of all, and keep dreaming. Ah, it is a good morning already. Yeah, bro, I got my coffee. <laughs> Don't talk to me until I've had my coffee. God, I fucking hate that shit. Such a fucking weird... I just fucking hate coffee, bro. I hate everything about it. I hate the coffee culture. Do you remember? I hate everybody's fucking obsession with it. I don't know. It's just irritating to me. All right, let's go and watch this shit. Portal 2 came out. Do you remember the trailers and ads for that game? Nope. It's been a long time. How have you been? But I do love Portal 2. The Valve that knew how to bring attention to their products. The Valve that could build hype and move units. In my last video, I opined the fact that Valve's marketing around the Steam Deck has been pretty awful. Now, Valve isn't reaching the demographic that I think would be the most solid in terms of Steam Deck's value proposition, but I stopped myself from going off on a tangential rant last time. However, you guys left comment after comment asking for that very rant. So I guess here it is. So four comments, Dem. Now, before I get all red in the face and say something that you guys are going to get upset about, let me preface all of this by saying, I understand that Valve is struggling to meet demand for the deck anyway, and that might make for what I have to say here a moot point. However, Valve's strategy here is sending mixed messages and they need to decide who they want the Steam Deck to be for. See, Valve's marketing strategy thus far has been to say, the Steam Deck is a portable PC. And yeah, it I is. mean, that's true. It most certainly is a PC. So it is a PC, but all evidence says the Steam Deck is a console. Interesting. 
but it also is not a PC. With yes, it few is. few notable exceptions. PC manufacturers include Windows on their systems for maximum compatibility. And there are a few crowds in the computing space. You can have a PC without having Windows, you fucking brainlet. More myopically focused on maximizing the potential of their PC than the gamers. Wait, the Steam Deck can only play 80% of the games I've never so much as even launched from my Steam library? Bah, humbug. So calling the Steam Deck a PC brings with it this stigma since it has a Linux OS under the hood. You know, they're not gonna be able to win over a ton of existing PC gamers. Gamers- Bro, literally everyone I know that's interested in the Steam Deck for the most part are people who already play on PC. That's such fucking cap with what I'll call a legacy library that might have incompatibilities, right? And you know, the Steam Deck has the deck verified classification system that will guarantee that games will work great on the Steam Deck. Now this isn't some self-service thing where game developers are left to self-verify their games are compatible with the Steam Deck. And this is not some crowdsourced baloney that Valve's tried to pull over on the gaming public before. This is Valve investing Ooh. real money and time and resources into a Ensuring that games are properly classified Bro, and confirmed he's just like to work with, with right the now. Steam the Deck. Book. This is not something that Valve would do if this were right. just a PC. After all, PC gamers are used to tweaking and futzing and poking and coercing games to run. They will fiddle with settings and add launch parameters and blah blah blah, right? That's PC gaming in a nutshell. So the idea that Valve wants to provide a consistent experience for deck users, that sounds like a console to me. And if you wanted definitive proof that the Steam Deck is not a PC, look at its price point. At 399 US dollars... What the fuck does that mean? Bro, there's PCs that are like fucking 150. Like, go buy a fucking Chromebook. That's a fucking PC. Valve is not making much, if any, profit from the base 64 gigabyte model. And it should go without saying that PC manufacturers don't do that. They don't sell their hardware at a loss. Only game consoles do. Nintendo, Sony, and Microsoft. When has Valve said they're taking a loss on the Steam Deck? I, I don't know if that's even true. Digital Demonic Davros of the Five. My PC is empty until I install an OS. What the hell? The OS is irrelevant to it. Um, just running a browser and Steam Launcher. Damn, Griffin. I, dude, I don't fucking know, man. Like, apparently Windows is what makes a PC a PC, apparently. So, Oscar Oscar with the two. I can't wait to play Cyberpunk 2077 on the go. No cap. We'll see how it runs. I don't know. I wouldn't hold your breath for that one, to be honest. Microsoft subsidized the price of the hardware with the expectations that you will buy more games from them later on and they'll make a profit from licensing software. That's how the industry works. And truthfully, Valve's CEO, Gabe Newell. I don't think Microsoft or PlayStation are selling their consoles at a loss anymore. I don't think that's a, I think that's a kind of a thing of the past at this point. Said as much. Quote, We've had to be very aggressive in terms of pricing on the deck. Determining a price point was painful, but that was pretty clearly a critical aspect of it. So, so determining a price being painful does not necessarily mean they're taking a loss. It just means that they're, you know, they're having to work very hard to keep the console affordable at that price. Meaning they had to do a lot of fucking tweaking, component searching, cost cutting measures in order to get it down to that price. At no point does that say they're taking a fucking loss. So while the Steam Deck might allow you to access a desktop and install games outside of Steam, it's a game console. First and foremost, it has oh built-in controls like this. All right, I'm going to put him down. He's like fidgeting and I don't want him to wake up. All right, bud. Let's put you on your bed. All right. I just put him down on his bed. And he has curled up and gone back to sleep. He's getting too big for my lab, man. It's kind of sad. Oscar wants to go to the two. I played it on the standard Xbox. I'm not worried. I don't know, man. Like mobile, mobile processors and heating is the issue. 
the heat will be the determining factor. Sam the Madman with a 2. Nah, Chromebooks don't have Windows. They're cons. Fuck, dude. My bad. I forgot. Only Windows makes a computer a computer. My bad. Switch. It's priced competitively against other consoles, and importantly, it is significantly less expensive than handheld gaming PCs. It runs its own custom operating system that isn't 100% compatible with every game on Steam. So this begs the question. Every game on Steam isn't compatible with a fucking Mac, but a Mac is still a fucking computer. That's not what makes a computer a computer. Is Valve subsidizing this hardware for existing Steam users on the hope that they'll continue to buy more games? Or are they hoping to release a Trojan horse to market to bring new users to Steam? Who A Trojan horse? The fuck? Who is the Steam Deck actually for? It's pretty simple. PC gamers who want to play their shit on the go. I mean, I thought that was pretty fucking clear. Valve kind of already said that shit. Console gamers. Like Valve even said, it's not really a thing for people who are outside of the Steam ecosystem. It's an addition to the experience you're already getting on PC. It's a companion device for your computer. It's not like a standalone platform. They're not marketing it as a console. They're marketing it as a way to improve your experience with your existing Steam library. I mean, can you use it as like a standalone console? Sure. But the target market is people who fucking already have a PC, already have a fucking Steam library, and have a ton of videos they... Or not video, fuck. Video games they want to play on the go. New generation of the two, can you start over? I missed the video. Nah, sorry man. But I think Rewind's on these streams, so there you go. It's obvious to me that console gamers who have never bought a game on Steam aren't tied down to their legacy Steam library. They're the people that Valve should be going after with the Steam Deck. It makes the most sense. And based on their actions, I think we can infer that Valve knows this. If you're brand new to Steam, you won't need to worry about not being able to play some of your games. You just stick to the Deck Verified section of the Steam Store. That's why Deck Verified exists. But the fact is, Valve insists on calling the Steam Deck a PC. And in my opinion, it is a PC. And there are few ways to turn off a console gamer faster than calling it a PC. The idea of PC gaming comes with... They're not trying to appeal to the... Co There's a reason why they literally only sold these things to people who had a fucking active Steam account. Like, bro, you literally had to have an active Steam account with a purchase made before a certain date. They're not trying to attract new people. They're trying to attract people who already have a fucking PC. They're not going after the casual console audience. Like, literally, in order to pre-order this thing, you had to have a Steam account with, like, purchase history. So, I don't know. It's like he's completely ignoring that fact. Oscar Wasco the 2, even if it runs bad, I have Halo and Valheim. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. Valheim will be cool on it, but Valheim is really fucking demanding, so that'll be interesting to see as well. Groovy! Yeah, I'm hyped for the Steam Deck. I was kind of pissed it got delayed, but I'm still in the February group, so not too bad. All this extra baggage. As we've already established, PC gaming is all about jumping through stupid hoops and tweaking settings and optimizing performance. Me no, it's fucking not. Meanwhile, the Steam Deck is a singular piece of kit. I believe it will become the baseline for PC games to target since Valve intends to ship millions, plural, of units. And if that does become the case, games on the Steam Deck won't feel like traditional PC games. Valve has already confirmed that games will be able to release a special version for the deck that utilizes less disk space and has optimizations for Proton and Linux. They'll just work, just like every other console. If your game depots are full of high resolution textures, audio, or movies, you may want to consider configuring depots with lower resolution versions specific to the Steam Deck. Yet another check in the Steam Deck is a console column. And yet Valve is trying to sell this handheld to the notoriously fickle and already established PC gaming crowd. Why? As a means to hedge their bets against Epic Games and other competitors? Maybe to keep the good f What? Bro, what the fuck does this have to do with Fortnite? Fight going against Windows ever encroaching walled garden. Yeah. Probably.
but also to bring new customers to Steam. That is a given. And I know that the chip shortage and the delays... And How is this thing bringing new customers to Steam when you literally need a fucking Steam account to buy one? That makes zero sense, bro. Blah, blah, blah. But Valve has already stated that they intend to sell millions of these. And they're not going to expand the Steam player base by selling to existing Steam customers. They know this. Yet their messaging so far has been, Hey, Steam customers, looking for subsidized console hardware that can play some of your games? For goodness sake, you have to have a Steam account in order to pre-order one of these things. Yes, they've successfully built hype among a certain type of PC gamer. Linus Sebastian and myself, for example. We are guys who already have a gaming PC or multiple gaming PCs and a Switch. But Valve needs to branch out and extend an olive leaf to console gamers. Folks who are stuck in their ways on Xbox and PlayStation and yes, Nintendo Switch. Technically, yes, the Steam Deck is a PC, but calling it a PC, I think, does a disservice to what the Steam Deck is aiming to be, a consoleized PC, a PC without all the cruft and annoyances and tweaking and optimizing that comes with traditional PC gaming. And Valve should be doing a better job in their messaging. They should be selling these at retail, and they should stop calling it a PC. I know that's going to piss a lot of people off, but I would love to know what you think. If somehow Valve is able to overcome the chip short- Yeah, this video was stupid as fuck. Steam Deck will have... So apparently he had like a video he was mentioning complaining about PC in general. We may have to look for that. Shortage and has a surplus of hardware, who do you think they should try to sell it to? Sound off in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Hopefully, even if you disagree with my take, you enjoyed this video. If you want to see more content like this, make sure you hit that like button. If we can get to 5,000 likes, my team and I will try to make more content just like this. No matter what you do, don't forget to subscribe my to stay up to date with all the stuff that we're doing here on the channel. We have massive like plans for 2022, no, and I can't not. wait to share all of it with you. Thank you for watching, and I want to extend a special thanks to my friends on Patreon and my YouTube members who make what I do here a reality. I truly wouldn't be able to do this if if it weren't for my patrons and my members. If you believe in the work that I'm doing and you want to join up on the Linux Warpath with me and help this show grow, use the link. The Linux Warpath? Bruh. Ew. Yuck. You wouldn't use a hammer like Linux. Yucky. That shit's fucking gross, bro. I don't like Linux. Do you remember? Not a fan. Not a fan. Like, I don't know, bro. There's no other group of people that are like, oh my god, bro, Windows fucking sucks. Linux for the win. He's a veteran of the Linux war. Damn, man. We should celebrate him on Memorial Day. Because he truly gave it all. And let's see. The floppy with the two brown losing brain cells. A very low IQ person. And let's see. The with the two. Here's the topic. Steak is best. Well done. Bro, you know that's fucking cap. You know that shit's cap. Come on now. Be reasonable. Philip Thomas with the two. This dude makes me cringe like, <laughs> yeah. That shit was pretty fucking bad. So let's see. Wings of Redemption has biggest disaster stream of the year. Uh-oh. Bro, this is going to be long. What the fuck? Damn. This must really be a disaster stream. Appearing offline does not fucking stop. Fuck that nigga. Fuck you. My lord. Fuck Child for an real for I'm 12. Oh my Whatever. I hope your family dies in automobile wreck. <laughs> I did say the age of consent Fuck should be 12. You. I hate my life. Do it. I can't take this shit no more. So nuclear man. Nuclear man. How long you gonna follow me, homie? And he ain't wanna talk to me. 
I even unblocked him just to talk to him. Nuclear man, come on, dude. Talk to us. Hey, nuclear man. Come on, talk to us. How long are you going to follow me? I don't know. So what caused you to start following me? Uh, I just watched Sunny BP's video on how much of a piece of shit you are, and I just decided, well, you know what? I'm going to just let this guy, you know, know how much of a piece of shit he is to a lot of different people. Okay. Have you ever considered that Sunny B2's video might be biased? Because Sunny B2 doesn't do a whole lot of research into his videos, and he just takes other people's videos and compilates them together. I don't know if you noticed, Sunny B2's videos almost are strictly just drama that he can rehash. And the worse he makes somebody seem, the more clicks he gets, the more money he puts in his pocket. I, I, I haven't watched Sunny's video or anybody else's. But I know all, like, like the only one that's even somewhat close to, like, accurate is, like, the down the rabbit hole video. And even then, that's, I don't know. There's huge, huge, like, issues that he gets entirely wrong in the video. Correct. <laughs> using 10 seconds clips out of context. Like, not, not only are they using clips out of context, they also, like, edit clips. We're taking it out of context, but like it's the fact. What's a lot of context We're about you with saying, the like, if your kids grow up to be gay, you're going to beat the shit out of them? Because I, because I was playing it. I wish you could actually hear the people chatting. They're way too fucking quiet. Because that's not true. I mean, because you said it. I mean, I also said I'd, I also said I'd fuck a cow. Do you think that's true? Do you think I'd fuck a cow? Every night before bed. Fucking roasted my bad guys. Do you think I'd fuck a cow? Yeah, nuclear man. You have to understand. If you listen to the tone of his voice, you can clearly tell it. Get off his. No, I'm asking you, do you think I'd fuck a cow? I'm sorry, what, what was that question? I said, I also said I'd fuck Bruh. a cow. Do you think I'd fuck a cow? Hope you yes. like a little challenge. Why would you? He really is focusing on the fucking cow. You say that. What What? What? What, what about my reasoning thinks I would I would have sex with a cow? I mean, what was, what was your uh, meaning behind you were going to plan out mass shootings? Has there ever been a period or moment in your life where you really shouldn't have had access to firearms? Oh, my whole life, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, oh. like I, I've, I've, I've gone, I've gone to serious depression routes many, 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 many times, and like, shoot. I mean, everybody's planned it out, but I've planned out mass shootings. Nice. All right. Planned it out, but I've planned out mass shootings. I've planned out mass shootings. Nice. Nice. All right. Everybody's planned it out, but I've planned like, what out. What the mass fuck, shootings. man? Nice. All right. What he's just like, yeah, nice. All right. He's like, yeah, dude, you're right. Everybody does plan out mass shooting. Like, what the fuck? Oh, but I've planned out mass shooting. Clicks. Clicks. What? Well, why would you say that though? You said like, to make money. To so everyone does it because uh, the I mean, everyone does it. I plan out mass shootings. To make money. Like you gotta understand. Like, here, like let me uh, let me explain to you. Painkiller already. Was my personality multiplied by times ten? It, it basically I was there as the the, the wild guy, the guy who tried to make comedy, the, the the outlandish guy to make people like, whoa, what you say? Why do you think that that? Why do you think there's enough content out there that people can put me on? I'm a total piece of shit every day of the week for the next two years and not have repeat content. So explain to me what's so comedic about planning out that shootings or what's what's so comedic about that? What, what in your like mind It's not it's not designed to be comedic, it's designed to get people Wings like, the next Nicholas Cruz. Oh shit. Are they both from um fucking I, I South said, Carolina? I just said I said that stuff for clicks. Like, oh yeah, well I planned out mass shootings. I said I I, I just told you I, I said that stuff for clicks to get well, people to go back on it then. Why are you walking back on it? Because I didn't actually mean it. You can say stuff like, like you're, you're also allowed to change your mind on things. I know I don't know if you know this, but you're allowed to change your mind on certain things. At one point, I was for like Southern heritage and like the rebel flag and everything, but I walked that back. You know, I walked it back. I educated myself. My grandfather actually killed a black man on his front porch and got away with it. It's just that he just grew up in a time where it was more okay to do. That. I mean, I, I can't help what my grandfather did, right? Wait, hold up. I didn't hear that right. Why is it not going back? That's not, that has nothing. Front porch. You said your grandpa shot a black guy on your porch. My grandfather actually killed a black man on his front porch. Oh, shit. 
It's just that he just grew up in a time where it was more okay to do that. I mean, I, I can't help kill? what my grandfather did. What the right? fuck? That's not, that has nothing to do with me. But, so, does that, so does your son at Southern Heritage justify you saying the N-word? You know, they use terms like nigger with an R and stuff like that. And we had a dog <laughs> named nigger. Like he was like a Rottweiler. <laughs> he was a black Rottweiler. I mean, I... I it, <laughs> Bro, what the fuck, man? Every time I've ever said it, it's it's been out of control. I am a racist to a point, fucking niggers. Why can't she just go marry an eight foot tall nigger? What the fuck? Nigger worth a hundred million dollars, like a basketball player, if she's going to fuck some nigger. And again, like the whole. <laughs> Bruh. Well, I'm racist to a point, taken out of context. I'm really taken out of context. Every the reason the, I could I, I can explain exactly what. Well, that's all. That's an edited clip. That's completely. That is one hundred percent edited. Look at the chat. Chat will tell you that that's a completely edited clip. You did not see it come out my mouth in that clip. You see my belly because they edited it together. DJ Bacon with the two. I have. Is Wings still married? Also, what the fuck did he just say, bruh? Wings has like a long history of saying weird shit, but yeah, he's still married. He's married for that fucking health insurance. It is completely edited. It's not completely edited. It's it is. Like, they, they take. That. Have you ever noticed you that in that clip? That, the fact that you said it, so. I didn't deny the fact that I said it. I was about to explain. You're not even giving me a chance to speak. I was, I was going to explain to you that the whole racist to a point because, like, I still believe that everybody is racist to a point. Every single person. There's something that you don't like about somebody else based off of nothing more than either a genealogy, a creed, or something. Whatever it might be. It doesn't have to be a huge scale. No, the stream should be fine because it's not age-restricted, so I should be okay. Scale or margin, but everybody has that little bit of cynicism in them. So, well, that doesn't mean that you're going to go out there. That's not. That means you're not going to go out there and be like, oh, I hate this person, I hate that person, I'm not going to do with this person. You say you're just cynical, but like at the same time, though, you say everyone does it, but you were the most likely. I mean, like doing it more often. I mean, I don't do it at all. That's the whole thing. I don't do it at all. Fun of a guy with an Indian accent. I did not. You better be scamming out. You better be scamming old people for money. That's not gonna help you. I told you. Yo, I have a question. What was the last thing you guys heard me say? My mic software just crashed. So I don't know how long my mic was out. What was the last thing you guys heard me say? Because I, I have no fucking idea where it, it like died. <laughs> Rip. I got to reinstall the fucking software on this bitch. I don't know why it keeps fucking up. Shit's mad annoying. If you can help your boy out, I would appreciate it. Don't you got 30 seconds? Okay, not even that bad. You gotta be like scamming some old people out of their life savings or something. What part What part of that sense did I mention his race? You're the one that's putting the context with that. The fact that you said that you were gonna scam him out for, for his money or scam people out for money. Okay, so the age restriction shit came through. Got it. All right, cool. It's a stereotype, mm -hmm. my guy. Mm -hmm. Again, why can't it just be like, oh, I'm having fun in Call of Duty. He's talking shit to me. I talk shit to him. It's meant to be fun. Like the whole the whole situation is designed to be fun. Right, it's, it's, so is fun to you? Um, you see, you see, you see how you're trying to make things. You know, no, no. Here's the problem. The problem is, the the problem is, you're coming from a situation where you want to hate me, no matter what. So like, if if what 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 caused me to hate you? What what caused you to hate me? A video? You've never talked to me. I'm, I'm giving him contact. I'm, I'm just wondering why these dudes spend all their life trying to fucking mess with me when I'm. They pretend I'm this terrible person that I'm not. I don't give a shit if I make clips, dude. That, that making clips does nothing but help me. One thing I don't understand is like is how like the mass of these people prove like pretend like they don't understand that sometimes you say stuff outlandish to get people to click on a video. That's like saying like this video will say will like cure cancer. You know, it's, it's clickbait. You say things to get clickbait. Come on, dude. You just fuck me up, dude. Yeah, bro. I say the, like, bro, I'm going to be wings here for a second and be like, 
yeah, man, this video will cure cancer. But yeah, Wings' interpretation of that is, yeah, the age of consent should be 12. Not really the same type of shit, but okay. Not Nia with the two. What have I come back to? The heck? We've come back to Wings, bro. Wings is king. And not Nia with the two again. I'm going to say the N-word. NASCAR? Oh, shit, bro. Welcome to band world. So, Great 8 Bot, when are you going to stop following me? Dude, we have people following us around with riot shields. Why? Because I'm a streamer and people hate me. Nah, you, you're never going to actually get through to him. I just wanted to see where he's at. Cause like when people cut, go in with the wanting to hate you, the, the the simple idea that you breathe the same air they breathe is enough reason for them to hate you. Like you got to have somebody wanting to change to actually make a change. They have pretty good reason to hate me. There's They have no reason to hate me because I'm not a racist. Have I said the N-word before? Yes. Have I said it since then? Every time I drive the truck. I, like, I don't censor myself when I sing rap songs. But, I don't hate people. I don't think anybody fucking censors themselves when they sing rap songs. Let's be honest here. Like, does anybody, like, bleep themselves in real time when they're, like, singing along to a rap song? Because I don't fucking think so. Like, bro, if you don't want me to sing along, don't put it in the fucking song. Simple as that. Gaming with a 2, the racist to a point clip was him reading. Eh, fair enough. I don't know the full context. I just think it's funny. I don't think Wings is legitimately racist, personally. I just think he says a bunch of sus shit. Great A bot, what you doing, player? You say beep when the naughty words come? Why would I admit that, though? Because I'm not a fucking pussy, bro. Like, if you don't want me to sing along to your fucking song and say certain words, then don't put the fucking words in a song. The fuck? Bro, I'm singing a fucking song. <laughs> like, what? Come up. Yo, what's up, man? How long are you going to follow me around? Till the end of time, baby. You have that kind of time on your hands? Uh, yeah. What's your favorite video of me? What's your favorite video? Uh, the one where you said that people oh, to destroy. Eight, years for eight. Okay. And destroy. Well, I mean, all, all of the entire one for you to live here. Take out the objective. Mm, I, helped, I helped set Woody and Kyle up to have a hobby that makes them hundreds of thousands of dollars. I think they'll be okay. I think, I think them kicking me off a show that that I co-founded and then monetizing it and making, you know, probably over a million dollars if you combine all the money at this point is a much worse slight than not going on a camping trip. But like, bro, he's still fucking salty over that shit. So let's see. DJ Bacon with the two showing my friend the stream. He doesn't know wings. Oh, damn. He's got a nice rabbit hole to go down. There's a lot of content. A new generation with the five who was the rapper who had the white girl sing his song and got mad at her when she said the n-word i'll fucking know but he should be mad at himself for putting it in the fucking song if you bring somebody up on stage to sing the fucking song and they sing it like look to yourself if you're mad about what that person said because you're the one who fucking wrote the song dumbass like for real that's like um kanye or whatever i'm pretty sure yo let me see if i can find that clip real quick Let's see if you can find that. There's a video of Kanye West like telling the audience like y'all have the N-word pass or whatever. I forgot where it is. Travis Scott gives white fan the N-word pass. I see that. Where is it? Shit, I don't know if I can find it. But yeah, it was funny. Like, most of them don't fucking care. In gaming with the two, most everything he said was shock value. It was funny. Eh, 
I don't know. I think Wings definitely has some sus-ass views of the world. But do I think it's, like, malicious? Not really. You're ignoring all the good things I've done. What about all the what, what about the uh, the girl I helped buy a car for? What about the cerebral palsy girl? What about all the people that's lost weight because they've seen how big of a failure I am? What about the years of entertainment I've given to people? Yeah, it's it's the same tired shit played out over and over and over again. Yeah, I actually joined that George Floyd party. Stream mode don't help, Patrick. Hey, Jordy, I don't think you're bad, but these guys have made some valid points. I hope you improve in your future. Again, for my wife's sake? Again, not a racist. I don't beat my wife. I don't abuse <laughs> my animals. I don't do any of that. All they have is a bunch of... New Generation with the Five. Look at Kendrick Lamar having chicks sing. Yeah, I've seen that one. I've seen that shit. I just don't remember his... Fu I'm going to be honest. I don't fucking like Kendrick Lamar, so I don't really remember much about him. I think his music's pretty fucking annoying. Like, Swimming Pools. Like, that song fucking makes me want to kill myself. Philip Thomas of the Five. Imagine getting the N-word pass from one of the young, respectable African-Americans of Paris. I know. You know, that's something I'd hold on to for life until I absolutely needed to use it. Gaming with the two old PK with wings or the new PK. I never really watched PK and I still don't really watch it, but I could believe that. I mean, wings is entertaining, so I could definitely see that. Plus back then you could actually talk about whatever the fuck you wanted to without worrying about getting a fucking guideline strike. So probably they had a lot more freedom in what they could actually discuss of like shock shock clips from podcasts that they show over and over again. No, there's 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 clips of me, there's audio clips of me shaking a dog's cage. That's not hitting. <laughs> I was raised by my grandparents, and they were old heads. You know, they used terms like nigger with an R and stuff like that, and. We had a dog named Nigger. Like, he was like a Rottweiler. <laughs> he was a black Rottweiler. But oh, that was from PKA in like 2010. <laughs> and I can't help what my grandparents named my dog. I've said multiple times my grandparents were both racist. That clip just gets me every single fucking time, bro. He kicks the fucking kettle and just shouts the fucking heart like, bruh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm busy screaming. No, I'm there over here fucking barking. Bruh. The door on the door. She's barking at someone in the door. Oh my god. I don't give a fuck. Shit, are you guys broke? Hold on. I'm busy doing a million things here. <laughs> Holy fuck, bruh. I gotta get in the street. Again, I didn't kick anything. I shook it. Shook. Stop! You know, that shit. Uh, sick average mods. I gave you that answer, and you guys considered it doubling down, so I'm not even going to comment on that anymore. But I consider... I don't stand by that statement. I did say the age of consent should be 12. You know why I said that? I knew girls that were like 12, 13, 14. Fucking on the regular. It has nothing... What the fuck? Nothing to do with me being a pedophile. I think that's just, I think that's nasty as fuck. No, it's just me. Yeah, there's a little bit of a difference between the age of consent being 12 and 13 and 14 year olds hooking up. Like, bro, there, obviously there's nothing wrong with like two fucking 13 year olds or two 14 year olds like having sex. Like, obviously that's going to fucking happen, you know, but to say the fucking age of consent. So like a 40 year old dude could go fucking have sex with a 12. That's fucked up, man. 
like there's a huge difference between saying like oh teenagers are gonna have sex versus oh yeah some 50 year old dude should be able to fuck a 12 like what the fuck man that's a little bit different that's a little bit fucking different <laughs> like how do you jump from oh yeah two 13 year olds at my school hooked up to yeah i think a 50 year old man should be able to fuck a 13 like what the fuck bro that's so messed up yeah he just keeps digging that hole i don't know why he even talks about that if there's one topic he should just completely fucking ignore it's that and he just keeps fucking digging it deeper fronting some of these people follow me around in video games i've already apologized monk of lee you want me to apologize again? I'm sorry for everything I ever said on PK. Like, what, how do you want me to apologize? It, there's so much random shit out there, and there's so much shit they'll find. I, just, I can't remember it all. Can't remember it all. Like, how do you want me to apologize for something? How about the trolls apologize to me a little bit? All right? Because I said dumb shit that affected no, nobody, that hurt nobody. There's nobody ever that has that has been hurt by the words I've said but me having assault rifles put in my face hurts me people that they're afraid that you're that I, that that somebody's gonna come and like kidnap their kids hurts them all the stress you put my family through why don't I get some apologies you've done eight times DJ Bacon with the two didn't he ask for money to get liposuction no he asked for money to get his fucking stomach removed so he had his like stomach literally surgically removed and that was supposed to make it so he couldn't eat a lot, so he would lose weight. But he still managed to gain all the fucking weight back, even with a literal missing fucking stomach. That takes... that Like, you have to try to not lose weight after you have that surgery. And Wings somehow managed to completely fucking waste it. What I've done to people. I'm going to tell you guys a secret. There's not a single person in my immediate family I can go to that hasn't been affected by the trolls at some point and i'm not even talking about like my mother my father my brother my sister all of them got all of them get hit every one of my past girlfriends have got hit at some point i'm talking about like aunties uncles cousins all of them been hit i can't find one person i can name in my family that hasn't been fucked with by the trolls five it's been going on for five years now jordy did they ever do any like i hope they didn't but did they ever do anything to like shalini dude yes yeah, I, I I already know not to ask about Brandy because I already know she probably got the fucking brunt of it, dude. Again, trolls are out here being are out here being offended for the sake of being offended. <sighs> we just lost. I'm pulling us out. Yeah, I'm pulling us out. Oh, the Rickler, the Rickler's restreaming me. All right, I got some news for the Rickler anyway. Uh, here's some here's some information for the Rickler. I'm also going to be pressing charges on his credit card for all he did only a couple years ago. Who's the Rickler? Oh shit, bro! Crucial Black with the five Roxy Wolf from New Five Nights at Freddy's game is Lady Dimitrescu to furries. Seriously, that game ain't scary. Off to yeah, I mean it's bro. Isn't like Five Nights at Freddy's meant for like seven year olds? I don't really think it's scary. I don't know. I have zero interest in fucking Five Nights at Freddy's, that's for sure. He's a mod I used to have called the Crown Prince. He did three hundred dollars with the chargebacks, which I still which I still have all the evidence for. I mean now y'all guys are garbage, I mean. Last guy broke a tower. I mean, what? Law enforcement are tipping themselves to protect me. I'm not view button. Keep that shit 100. I forgot to run main Lummox. Keep that shit 100. Uh, reason I kicked Rios is I had a suspicion the other day that he was a troll, and he that's how the trolls were getting in. And uh, I was just sent some screenshots that uh, pretty much proved that he that's the, how they were getting in. I don't know who January is. So like, if the trolls join again, we're getting rid of him. Let's go ahead and remove. January as well. Jordy, there's a dude that just sent me a friend request named Syndicate, and his clan tag says 1v1. I'm blocking. Because remember the other day when we were playing and trolls were joining when I was off stream? That guy's high as fuck, dog. Uh. 
<sighs> yeah. Yeah, Rio seemed a little bit salty and bothered about us accusing him of being a troll. Because he is a troll. There's no way those guys join unless he invites them the other day. As Rickler said, he is filling a countersuit for emotional distress or filing a countersuit for emotional distress because of your allegations. What a fool. These trolls just don't give up. But thank God they don't since you are such a hateful, disgusting person. Bruh. Alright. I'm just going to get off. Thanks everybody for coming out the stream. Thanks everybody for chilling out with me. I'm frustrated right now. I'm just going to get off. Hope everybody have a wonderful time. Thanks everybody who donated. I'll see you guys a little bit later. Peace, people. Either subscribe, donate, or get the fuck out. Hold up, we can do a little bit better. Either yeah, subscribe, subscribe, donate, donate or get, get the, the fuck, fuck out. out. Facts. Wings dropping the hard reality. Ugh. Shit, man. Let me get some more G Fuel real quick. All right, we good. <clears throat> There's truly no redemption to his wings. Exactly, bro. We're long past the point of redemption for our old pal wings, unfortunately. Gamer energy indeed, man. Gamer fuel. The Metal Gear documentary? Blech. Gross. That sounds fucking awful. Hold on, let me check something real quick. Oh, yeah, I forgot. I remembered it. I remember it. Fuck. Me just going on my phone helped me remember that. Let's take a look at this real quick. I want to show you guys the future of gaming. Okay. We're going to take a look at the future of fucking video games here. Like this is the greatest console ever fucking made. And it's going to be absolutely phenomenal. Just wait guys. We're going to check out this amazing fucking. Intellivision Amico sneak peek. User interface. <laughs> Move over, PlayStation 5. Hey, this is Tommy Tellerico, and I'm here with a very special... Bro, that doesn't even look like the fucking iPod. That looks like a fucking Microsoft Zune. ...special person, because we want to show you a very special video today. I'm here with one of our... Why does his hair always look like he just woke the fuck up? And just put some grease on top of it. Like, does he actually think that looks good? Amazing art directors, Ed. Ed, we've been working together now for... for about 30 years now. 30, yeah. 30 years. Oh, my God. I know. Can you believe it? If anyone ever played Earthworm Jim, Disney's Aladdin, this is one of the amazing talents behind the art for those games. Now, Ed, we've been working on the user interface now for... For about a year. For about a yeah. year. And we're going to take a very quick sneak peek yep. of our user interface for the very first time. Ed, take it away. Let's jump in. Yeah, so when uh, the, when you turn on Amico. Bro, look at this shit. This looks so fucking bad. Oh my God, bro. DJ Aftershock with the two, the Amico is a win for gaming America and the world. Facts, bro. We'll have world peace when everybody gets their fucking Amicos. Like, this looks so bad. 
Oh, this is your landing page. This is our home. Screen. Like, look how low res everything looks. Screen UI. UI stands for user interface. So from this screen, you can uh, you can do all kinds of Bro, things. Bro, this looks like so game. bad. You can make purchases here. You can uh, customize your, your console, the lights. You can do all kinds of great stuff uh, from, from, this, from this page. And one of the things that was really important to us was showing movement all the time. You can see that video screen there to the right. But every game that you own and even... We have to show movement all the time to keep the fucking... Just... <laughs> fucking, I'm not going to say it. ...ones you don't own are represented by a globe. But the ones that you do own, you can see they are spinning and they're lit up and, uh, you know, they have different, uh, so you really know which. We took the idea of your own library and the store and we've kind of combined them together and talk about the different categories. Yeah, so from from here, you can scroll up or down and, and look at the different categories. We've got categories for, uh, as you can see, for kids, for party games, sports games, action games. You could own a certain game, but it can be represented in multiple categories. So it really depends on what your mood is for that day. Crucial Black with a 2. Anybody read that Kotaku article? We can take a look at that next if you guys want. And DJ Bacon with the two, this looks like a cool math game. With the, yeah, it really does. I don't, there's just something really is off about this user interface, and I can't really put my finger on it. But everything about it just looks really fucking bad. Or that, or that uh, uh, evening. So let's go in now. Once you, now when you do hover over a globe, when you pick the globe, you'll see the monitor comes in. Now, Ed, this is a physical edition this is a, one of our boxed edition games isn't it how do we know that well as you can see you've got a you've got a badge oh somebody asked me about some weird article if i had found anything like it as far as like the sonic feet one i have found one like that also which i may save for a video but i just looked at my phone and i remember i had it pulled up in the tab so yes i do have one like that there that tells you that it's a collector's edition yeah bro where the fuck is finnegan fox i guess it's not going to be ready for launch game but uh the, the unique thing about this is it also tells you uh what number you you happen to purchase so everybody has a unique number everybody has a unique number yeah and in addition to uh your unique number there's also in the collector's edition games that you purchase uh, you get a lenticular card and a coin which we represent digitally here so only people that, that purchase the collector's editions uh, will get these extra little digital items in their, uh, in their UI. Very cool. We even have the box as well, right? Even, look at that. The box, yeah. <laughs> the box itself. Very, very cool. So if we go back out to the, to the main UI here, uh, we can also, I mentioned that we could change some of the, uh, the settings. Well, let's go through some of the settings. I mean, you have the system setting, which is all that stuff. But yeah, we can quickly scroll through some of these. Yeah, we've got uh, we've got all of these options here where you can uh, you can do things like change the lights on your console. Uh, Dude, language, everything language. about this looks so fucking bad. Like just the way the text is like so lazily overlaid on top of the fucking image. Like, oh my god, it looks so bad. Can, can, can we change this to Italian? Yes, we Come can. Come on. Oh, look at that. We put it second. There you go. Let's Switch see. It Italian. Hey, Italiano. And there ah. you go. And we'll go back to English. And then we can take a look at uh, what it's like to purchase a game. All right. So let's purchase Finnegan Fox. I want to I want to get that. Oh, one. shit. There it is. A featured game. So we're going to always have a featured game when a new game comes out. They'll always be there. And and here you go. You can uh, you can buy right should we buy it let's buy it all right let's do it so we have uh we, we already have a, a credit card selection we have a stored credit card that we're going to use here uh just so we can show you how this whole process works you go down and you make your purchase and then from here the game's gonna you're gonna see the game start to download and there it goes yep it will slowly start to ramp up and it goes from being a ghost 
to popping to life and, and being a, a colorful globe and orb. Look at that. Woohoo! And there you go. You own Finnegan Fox now. Party. Wow, dude. Hey, can we favorite Finnegan Fox? Groovy! So once you own a game, you can go in and then you hit favorite and then you go back out and then go to your favorite section and there's Finnegan Fox. There it is. Yeah. There it is. So you can see if we uh, we can wow, dude. From right here. And you Very just... cool. These are some crazy advanced features. Yep, you just hit play and there you go. It goes up. I like I like how the screen zooms in like that. Very cool. And you'll notice how quick these Bruh. games are too, right? Well, there you have it. A little sneak peek of our user interface. Yeah, and we'll be showing more of the UI as we get closer to launch. So uh, keep an eye out for those videos. That's right. Thanks, everyone. All I know is, man, is I'm very hyped to get my fucking Amico. I can't wait to experience real gaming for the first time. I'm very excited to experience real gaming. Hold on one second, guys. I'm so glad. All right, I'm back. All right, let's see. So what should we do next? A five-year-old find the Amico disappointing? Yeah, I mean, I guess the good thing is now is all the kids are safe from the fucking Christmas season because that was always one of my concerns is, like, this shit would come out and then a bunch of kids would get fucking stuck with this shit. Instead of like a Switch or an Xbox or something like that. Like I'd actually kind of feel bad for him. Did I grab? Yeah, I have like a sealed copy of like every single fucking um, Amico launch game. Like I bought the full fucking bundle. So I have one. I have a copy of Finnegan Fox. <laughs> I don't know. Griffin just got back from his dog abuse session. Yeah, that's right, man. That's right, man. I just beat the shit out of my dog. How'd you know? Seems like really in character, right? So what should we watch next? Yeah, bro, I got the game of the year ready. Like, Finnegan Fox, you can't even play it yet because the console's not out. But you know what? It's already a certified banger, bro. Best game of 2021, hands down. Easy clap. 
yeah, those really high end Amico exclusives that still, yo, actually that's a good, that's a good question. Where's the description? Did they get rid of the description here? So hold up. Let's see. So right here. How do you get to the description? What the fuck? Where the fuck is the description now? Did they get rid of it? Did they remove descriptions? Or am I tripping? What the fuck? Oh, you gotta click up. What the fuck, man? This new user interface is ass cheeks. Let's see if these limited edition things have sold out. When did they get announced? October 10th. So almost three months ago. So almost three months ago, these limited edition collector's editions were announced. Look, they're still fucking available. They're still available. What the fuck, man? Not so limited after all. Limited collector's edition. But yeah, I have a set of them. I bought this, the 8-pack. So these are the great games. You get, you get Evil Knievel, Dyna Blaster, Missile Command, Rigid Force Redux, Moon Patrol, Finnegan Fox, Certified Banger, Biplanes, Bisexual Planes, and Brain Duel. Yeah. All of this is like fucking shovelware. That's, sh that's literally a fucking reskinned mobile game. Dog shit. Dog shit, dog shit, dog shit. Goated fucking game of the year. Uh, bisexual planes, no idea. And brain duel, like who the fuck is going to play that shit? But yeah, still fucking available, man. You know, the limited collector's editions. Really flying off the shelf. Has anybody shat on this thing yet? Or recently? Has anyone made fun of this fucking shit? So, in television of Miko, deceptive scummy marketing tactics? Interesting. I feel like there's a lot of fucking material for somebody to make, like, a super in-depth, like, exposed video on the Intellivision. And I just feel like it would be a really easy thing to make content on. In all honesty. Like there's so much stuff. Is this a scam? This is the Amico. But instead we sat through an hour presentation about a new video game system from a new company. That company would be called Intellivision. Mike out. I think it's good now. Looks like it's fine. Yeah, like I said, the um, software has just kind of been crashing. Yeah. It should be okay. I was watching the bar. I saw the little thing pop up that said loading files, so I knew it rebooted. A name used by Mattel for their video game console released in 1979. The old product name would be repurposed into a new company nearly 40 years later and they plan to release a new game system called Amico in October of 2020. I have never heard of the fucking Intellivision name before this dog shit. Same with Tommy Tellerico. Like, apparently he's like a gaming celebrity. I've never fucking heard of the dude in my life. A presentation announcing a console launch at a retro gaming convention, in addition to acquiring a name connected to retro gaming, piqued interest. Announcing there would be a heavy focus on retro reimagined games while catering to those who preferred physical media fully cemented support from a small but dedicated group of enthusiasts. Initially, the system was advertised as budget friendly with all games priced at $7.99 or less. Physical games for those who wanted them would- Oh, dude, I'll 100% play this shit on stream. I'm planning on buying one.
would be offered for around $10 more and would be paramount of the platform. A lot of people have said, yeah, but, but you know, we like our physical material. I do too. I mean, look at going out there and seeing the old in television cartridges or some of the old boxes and stuff like that. That's so cool. So we're not going to abandon you. Don't worry. Yeah, nothing screams cool like physical games. What we're doing is, is that those are going to be like similar games. Like if you play a game like Undertale, for example, for those you know, Undertale was a downloadable, it was a Kickstarter project, Toby Fox. They do a great, you know, great, amazing thing. And it got so popular that people wanted physical copies of the game. And so they did, you know, special limited edition, gold foil, sign, numbered, whatever. So we'll do those as well. So you'll get a, you know, if you want to pay 20 or $30, for a box. We're going to make it special though. We're going to put in a special poster signed by the designer of the game or special numbered only copy, this and that. Every game on the system would be curated to ensure nothing released unless it was worthy of a 7 out of 10 review score or higher. Keep the games great, keep them high quality or else they don't go on the system, that's all. And then the other shit was is every single game was going to be fucking exclusive. That was a fucking lie when it was found out that almost every single game is a fucking shitty mobile game port. This is a subjective thing, but if it isn't at least a 7 out of 10 on the scale, it's not going on the system. We're not gonna, we're not gonna put it out. I'm not sure how this could be anything other than an empty promise, but it sounds good to say no shovelware would release on the Amico. The final massive claim important to this video was zero ports would be permitted on their platform. It would strictly be for remakes and original titles. No ports allowed. Literally, like that fucking Evil Knievel game, literally a fucking mobile game port. Finnegan Fox is literally on Steam right now, and it's called Fox and Forest. Like, this motherfucker is so full of shit. And the other thing too, a powerful statement, all games are console exclusive. Now this is a little gray area, does that mean we're not going to have Tetris? Does that mean, well, Tommy, we saw Burger Time, we saw all these games up there. You, you'll be able to get those on other systems, maybe, but not the way you're going to get them on our system. Every game, we're not doing any ports. No ports on our system. Don't want them. The others can do them. I don't care. It's not to say That's right, some man. things didn't change over. Why would you want good games on your console? The fuck? Like, does he really think that there's going to be people lining up to make fucking exclusive titles for this dog shit? Uh, Oscar, Oscar, the two. When are you going to do the reaction ones? We've already done all those. Like, those, I don't like they've made more of them because people just shat on them so much. Groovy! Over time, such as the pricing, it was originally $7.99 or less, but later increased to $9.99 or less. These prices are quite clearly posted too, so you can make the- Yeah, and the original price of the console was supposed to be like 180 and now it's up to almost 300 bucks. And now Tommy's like flaunting the fact that he only has to sell 100,000 of them to break even. Like, that's where the mindset is. They're just worried about cashing in off the initial release. They want to at least break even and then make any money on top of that. This thing is never going to be fucking supported past fucking six months. It'll be dead. Call when considering a purchase if the price is worth it for you. However, none of the publicly disclosed and transparent changes seem to be major. Even when Tommy conducted a Reddit AMA last year, he continued to promise physical media. But a Reddit AMA shouldn't be the place consumers are getting their info, and I'll discuss that more in a moment. Now, I'll be honest. I don't follow these things really close, and especially with something like the Amico, where there's so much drama, I try to distance myself so I can have my final opinion and judgment unaffected should I decide to cover it on this channel. So when the Founders Edition launched in January of 2020, I put my order in and have essentially avoided most things Amico until I received an email on October 10th advertising their collector's box sets were available for order. I knew Tommy had stated multiple times in the past that games would be physical media, but would do something special no other company had done before. I read over the email to see what exactly that special thing was, but only saw one section regarding it. Our goal was to take the best parts of traditional physical media. The best parts of traditional physical media and the best parts of digital and combine them into something very different and unique. 
I am confident the collectors will really enjoy this. So this is what's fucking great about the physical media of the Amico is like they literally say like, oh, yeah, we made the boxes out of cardboard. So it's fucking recyclable. So look at this. I'm confident that collectors will really enjoy this. What collector recycles their fucking video game cases? That's not a fucking thing. So this was not for collectors. It's literally just junk. It's cheap as fuck. And that's the whole fucking purpose behind it. And the best parts of digital combine them into something very different and unique, explains Intellivision CEO Tommy Tellerico. I am confident that collectors will really enjoy this. So I was still unclear, but I knew the system wasn't launching in 2021 and more info would likely be coming. Maybe this new physical media would allow the user to download the game to the console's internal memory so they didn't have to pull the physical game out every time they wanted to play. Maybe allow digital downloads in addition to the physical media, much like what music companies are doing with vinyl records. I really had no idea. But I like these niche things, especially when related to games, so I put in my order and figured they would ship with the console. To my shock, the order shipped eight days later and without the system. So what exactly was I getting? And why ship games for a system that almost certainly won't arrive this year? The box arrived in- Cause they're desperate for fucking money. That's why. Was filled with disappointment. All of these games are the same, so let's look at one so you can have a clear picture of what I- Like, look how junky this thing looks. Like, it's literally flimsy-ass cardboard with a piece of fucking plastic and an NFC card inside. Received. The case is molded after the original Intellivision game box, keeping all of the worst features while discarding the best ones. Spoiler alert, the best feature of the old boxes was their build quality. The Amico boxes are essentially a heavyweight cardstock, with the cover flap receiving a double layer. It's needed too because these boxes are clearly not designed to be handled more than a few times. The flap is not secure either and should have included a magnet, velcro tab, or- But dude, it's for collectors though, right? This is what collectors are looking for. Poorly designed, low quality fucking physical goods, right? Or slipcover. As they are now, it feels incomplete and unpolished. Moving to the inside, you get a fancy playing card, coin, and a plastic card that's most comparable in quality and function to a plastic hotel card key. This card contains a digital download code for the game. The package does not contain a physical game, just a physical piece of plastic with a code requiring the internet on your end and the Amico servers to be online on the other. In my opinion, this is a bait and switch disaster. In fact, I want to be clear with how I feel. This is outright scummy. For a physical game package designed by a company that pushes retro gaming tenants and markets their products to retro game enthusiasts, these may be the worst thing out there. Only being topped by those odd Gamecom cases that ship with their reimagined titles like Centipede. The Amico has a problem. It's what I'll refer to as the three crowd. Not DJ Bacon with the two. I would use my game cases for target practice. Hey man, go for it. I wouldn't blame you. Amelie. Crowd1 really dislikes the company, people running it, and or the product itself. They actively discuss all perceived negative aspects of the staff, company, games, and system while hoping to be vindicated in their predictions. Crowd2 is the exact opposite. They are hook, line, and sinker all in, and nothing will change their minds. They are emotionally invested, discuss the system ad nauseum, and will do everything possible to and you know what's really fucking interesting too about those game cards is the game itself is not on the card and there's no guarantee that when the games or the car fuck, when the console or the games come out that those cards will actually allow you to play those games like there's zero promise that you'll ever be able to get the fucking games that are in those physical media products. All they're promising to sell you is the actual physical items as a collector's edition. There's no guarantee that you'll ever get a license to those games. Because most of those games are probably not going to even be fucking close to releasing at launch. Promote it while retconning anything that can make it look bad. In layman's terms, we call these fanatics, groupies, and superfans. I... 
And you generation sure with the two. My dad bought my mom a gun that shoots pepper balls. That's kind of cool. I don't really know how um useful that would be, but it is pretty cool. Grew tired of the first two groups in early 2020 and have actively avoided them along with all forms discussing the system and the general hype and negativity surrounding it. Group three is just your standard gamers. And that's where the vast majority of us fall. While the knowledge levels yeah, within bro, these subsets gamer. may vastly vary, the third group is not invested like the first two and is almost certainly out of the loop. This is a major issue as the console appears to be actively marketed to the first two groups, while assuming that the third group is just as knowledgeable about what's happening behind the scenes. And that's just not realistic. All of these YouTube personalities discussing this system while drip feeding news to an echo chamber are extremely niche. Just search the word Amico on YouTube and you'll see a ton of videos almost all with very limited views. So only the first two groups are up to date since they have a vested interest and will remain that way until the system is finally released and likely until it meets its demise. Where does that leave the rest of the gaming community? The same place we've always been. We sign up for newsletters, hope to catch the occasion. Bro, most people have never even fucking heard of this thing. It's gonna die so quick. You know what their grand marketing strategy is too, right? Like Tommy's been on record saying that their plan to get people to buy this thing is to go to like fucking kids toy channels and have them advertise it on YouTube with a dedicated video. Like that's going to fucking convince people to buy this dog shit. Regional press release rely on one of the few public statements we may be aware of to be factual and pray transparency remains paramount within the company producing the products we are interested in. Herein lies the problem with the Amico. When you send out an email blast advertising limited collector's box edition complete bundle, and this email is without a doubt targeting retro gamers, you do so knowing full well that those not in the first two groups are expecting physical games. If I sold a package described in this manner, but only included download codes, there would be hell to pay. When the sales email doesn't disclose that the purchaser isn't getting physical games, that the package is just a cheap box containing download codes only, and zero of these games are playable without downloading them first from the internet, you've dropped the ball. And that's exactly what Intellivision did when they sold these sets. I would venture to say that if you are in the third group like myself and you purchased a set, you were scammed. If you were in the first two groups and purchased these empty boxes, you experienced some scummy marketing and sales tactics. I'm not upset that the first batch of games breaks a promise by including multiple ports from other platforms like the Switch and old mobile phone games. It wasn't unexpected, even if a big deal was made about only publishing exclusive games of high quality. I expected the Amico to change course because it's a terrible choice to exclude games on a platform that target its demographic. Beyond that, the consumer can check out reviews, look up game info to see if it's for them, and see if Intellivision is being honest about the games that they are selling. Spoiler alert. Shit, my thing was muted. I don't know why. But yeah, those cards are going to be completely fucking worthless. When the servers go down in like 12 months after fucking launch. Because there's no way they're paying to keep that shit up. The company is probably going to go fucking bankrupt. They're not going to make any money off of this shit. They have not been. You don't need to be upset about ports of Finnegan Fox, Dino Blaster, Evil Knievel, Brain Duel, or Ridge Force Redux not being original games, even if Intellivision isn't upfront about these being released on other platforms. You don't need to be upset, but you should certainly be aware. So back to the games I received. These are advertised at $9.99 each, with the physical editions costing $10 more. Then there's the shipping on top of that, so Intellivision is getting the full $20 return on each one sold. When I first raised questions about this whole deal, superfans tried to explain that this was a great deal. And the margins for box games are tight. I think that's BS. There's not a ton of comparable examples, but we have some. Nintendo, Sony, and Microsoft all have physical games that sell for $20 or less. Those are the big three though. So what about a company that appears to be smaller than Intellivision? How about the Evercade, which ships physical game cartridges in Sega Genesis style clamshell cases with a color instruction manual? 
these are sold in that same price range. In fact, yeah, it definitely is a get rich quick scheme that turned out to be a lot fucking harder than anybody actually thought it was going to be. I can order them from Amazon shipped to my house for $20 each. And that's before Amazon takes their cut. These are physical games that I can play with or without internet access shipped for 20 bucks. Moving back to the Amico, when you look on the boxes, there is no indication that the physical games are not included in the package. And that's another massive, massive issue. Yeah, that is There's a big issue. There's mention about an internet connection being needed for digital game downloads, but no indication that the physical package is just that. A package for a download code and some tossaway items. I have zero desire to purchase packing material for a game I can only own in a digital format. And it's not that I'm against digital games. I'm just against the way these are being marketed in an extremely deceptive manner and for a price that doesn't justify the product received. I can say with 100% certainty that these are not worth the money. And while I still hope that the Amico can deliver bite-sized games that I can enjoy with my family and friends, this experience has knocked down my expectations to a minimal amount. I want to see the Amico, Evercade, Playdate, and all other small gaming companies succeed. But I won't stand by and give a pass when unethical marketing tactics are used. To the executives at Intellivision, I wish you the best. But if you continue to move Why? down a path that uses... Tommy Tellerico can kick fucking rocks, bro. That dude's a loser. He's like an old man trying to desperately prove he's still fucking cool. That's Tommy Tellerico, bro. I wouldn't wish him the best. Let's see. I just want to see if more people are making. The Amico's a scam. Amico's a scam. <laughs> Suspicious in television, Amico gameplay of Finnegan Fox. Physical media revealed. Yeah, I just know, like, this whole thing is going to be a fucking disaster. 100%. It's going to be a complete fucking dumpster fire. Hold up, I want to show you guys something real quick. I did want to show you all something real quick. Take a look. There's the pupper sleeping right now. He's just chilling, bro. <laughs> the man is snoozing. But yeah, that's him on his bed right now. He just got his head, like his little head propped up. But yeah, he's just snoozing right now. He's getting big. Yup, he is getting big. But yeah, he's just chilling over there. Why would I wake him up? He needs to sleep. He needs to sleep so he keeps getting bigger. I want him to be huge. Like a massive fucking dog, bro. Like a hundred pounds or something. A pure like muscle. Just a ripped fucking dog, man. But yeah, he's just snoozing. He's been really good, honestly. Like he's been sleeping for about four hours tonight. Out of his crate, so. Hasn't had to pee or anything, so. Pretty good sign. He is maturing. Wholesome? Agreed, man. It's hard to be the dog. Make him fat? Nah. He's got to be better than me.
I don't want a 450 pound dog that can barely walk. Yeah, the Miko does have no fucking chance. It has zero fucking chance. I don't know. It's going to be fun to watch it fail, though. I'm probably going to pick it up. Well, I definitely am going to pick it up. I'm going to play that shit. My right nut hurts. Oh, shit, bro. Try squeezing it. I'm a 450-pound dog that can barely walk. My life can't get much worse. Yeah, poor Apollo, bro. He's a 450-pound dog that can barely walk. Hold on, let me see if I can find this other picture real quick. Send it to my cell. Fuck. Uh... Shit, I can't find it. So what should we watch next, guys? What should we take a look at next? What do you guys want to watch? I'm trying to think of if there's anything else worth checking out tonight. But, dude, YouTube's just been drier than a motherfucker. I don't know. I haven't been able to find anything really that great. Sonic 2 trailer? Nah, I'm good. I don't fucking care about that. Amazon Snow Turtle? Maybe. I don't really want to watch Low Tier God. That's too long for tonight. What time is it? It's 3. I may just go ahead and call it for tonight. I may just go ahead and call it, honestly. I mean, we've been live for, like, what? Three and a half hours? That's probably good. We'll save some shit for tomorrow. Because, honestly, it's been slim fucking pickings, in all honesty. It's been hard to find shit to even watch. So I think I'm probably going to end it for tonight. I don't know. I can't really think of anything else. And you generation with the five watch that airplane freak out video with the model spitting. And, uh, I think I'm good. <laughs> that sounds nasty as fuck, man. I think I'm good. I'm going to go ahead and call it, guys. Appreciate everybody for coming out. Big ups to everybody in the chat. Hope you all have a good night. Good morning or whatever. I'm going to try to finish recording the video tomorrow. So it's probably good I don't stay up too late. Because I'm going to wake up and try to do that. And then get it edited. And hopefully have it uploaded tomorrow afternoon. But if not, it should be up Friday. So just keep an eye out for that. I'm going to do my best to get it up by tomorrow though. But unless it takes... I want to say it should be out tomorrow. But just judging by how slowly I've been working on it. Because I've been like recording a lot more than I normally would. So, yeah, I don't know. It should be out tomorrow, but possibly Friday. So just keep an eye out. I'm going to do my best, guys. But hope you all have a good one.
Appreciate everybody for coming out. Thanks for all the support as well. And I will talk to y'all later. Peace out. Have a good one, guys.